This is Super Yacht News with Yves Sisman. Hi, welcome back to the channel. So, reporters from Radio Free Europe were given a fiery welcome by a Super Yacht crew from a Russian yacht recently. The journalists visited Marina de Carrara where the Super Yacht, which is believed to be owned by Vladimir Putin, was arrested slash seized by the Italian government in 2022. Now, to get close to the yacht, they apparently had the use of a small boat and it's when they got close to the now 142 meter vessel that things got crazy. I say now 142 because it was 140, but they've had a stern extension added to the yacht recently whilst arrested in that marina. The crew started to run around on deck, seemingly to quickly activate fire hoses, which had been fixed to the rails all the way along the yacht. And they, and they sprayed a mist indiscriminately down the side of the yacht. Now, there's really no valid reason why any Subiot crew would do this other than to try to prevent another small boat getting alongside the yacht. The journalists say that they're using the fire hoses like a fire drill, but this is not how you would fight a fire on a yacht, spraying water over the side of the vessel. Um, that behavior has nothing to do with the fire drill. Uh, you don't fix hose, water hoses to the rails of a yacht and point them outwards like this. It seems to be very clearly an attempt to uh, spray water into the, you know, spray water over the side of the vessel and to potentially soak anybody getting too close. Now the Guard of the Finanza or Financial Police, these are the same police that froze the yacht there in the first place, appeared and checked their IDs apparently as a request of the yacht itself. They actually called the Financial Police on the boat, but they eventually allowed them to continue filming. And the crew of the seized yacht also launched a drone to use for surveillance and it, and it was buzzing the small boat with the journalists in it. Then the crew of Shahrazad even called the local police on the journalists to try to prevent them getting any footage. But after also checking the documents, they allowed them to continue filming. This is all based on what the report says that of the channel that posted this video. I'm going to put a link to it in the bottom in the uh, description below this video. Now, none of this is what you'd expect to be doing when you take a job on board a super yacht as crew. Now, I know that they, there's some mention of a, a private security firm also working in the vicinity of that yacht that seems to have been hired to protect the yacht. There could be that the private security firm has set up this uh, and the people on board might not actually be part of the ship's crew, but it might be the security firm instead. But you can see in the footage where the stern of the yacht is still covered as work on the stern extension that we reported on on this channel in our last video from Italy shows the vessel having approximately two meters stern extension added despite the yacht being frozen by the Italian authorities. Now clearly that work is continuing. The crew are seemingly acting as security guards to prevent people from simply getting close to or filming that yacht. I think if I was a member of that crew, I'd probably find a job on another yacht where I can actually do some seamanship instead of this strange behavior of trying to soak journalists with hoses. Now, the reporters brought their own drone to use, but said, that, said about it, when launching our drone, we immediately encountered unexpected interference and loss of communication with the drone. The drone rushed towards the yacht, but later control over it was regained. We were unable to determine the cause of this interference. So is the crew using some sort of drone jamming tech? Now they went on to say that subsequent launches of the drone carried out in the presence of the police and with their permission took place without incident. So that's a, a coincidence, isn't it? Uh, although the drone from Shahrazad remained in the air and even got into the frame of their own aircraft. That's a, a quote from the article. Like I said, we'll put a link below to the article uh, and it's got the video attached to it as well. All right, we'll move on. We've got an update on Motiot Elysium. We made the two videos last week on this subject. This was the, uh, the yacht purchased by a banker with a Saudi princess's trust fund. So last week we covered the story of Ronald Gibbs, the banker who allegedly used a trust fund set up on behalf of a Saudi princess to buy a super yacht, amongst other things. The yacht was purchased and sailed by Gibbs as captain slash owner and was named Motiot Elysium. It's a, a Sunseeker 131 model built for Gibbs new and delivered in 2018. Now this is right around the time when he was being ordered by the trust beneficiary, the princess, to liquidate the fund and return the money. 
something that Gibbs never did and was taken to court in the UK in December with a court found for the plaintiff and ordered Gibbs to pay around two million pounds to the princess, which is about $2.5 million. Now in that court case, he talked about the fact that the yacht was up for sale on the Sunseeker website and there was an offer on the yacht. This was in December. The yacht's still for sale on that website right now, so I don't know whether that, uh, whether that offer was taken or whether it fell through. Now, in the last episode, we also said that the yacht was laid up in Port Adriano in Spain. However, something we couldn't report on then because we didn't have enough information was that the yacht was arrested in Port Adriano whilst undergoing yard work. Uh, now, we've had this information come in from a, a source that wishes to remain anonymous. He says that Elysium was arrested by the local authorities in Mallorca due to unpaid bills during its five-year uh, work slash survey whilst out of the water. Allegedly, hundreds of thousands of euros were owed to local companies. Elysium never made it back into the water for the 2023 season and was seized by the bank in July 2023 as Mr. Gibbs hadn't paid the loan on it for quite a while. The information comes from a source, like I said, who wishes to remain anonymous. Now, we also had information that a loan, a further loan was taken out against the yacht, but we've been unable to confirm this independently. Now, the yacht is for sale, as we mentioned, on the Sunseeker website. It's 13.9 million euros, uh, or 11.8 million pounds, or 14.9 million dollars. So the yacht has lost the value of around 5.8 million euros, which is 5 million pounds or 6.2 million US dollars since delivery. Now, if the loan on the yacht or if the money owed on the yacht for the reason why it was arrested was less than the total value of the yacht, then after the yacht is sold, any money left over will go to the owner, right? That's how it generally works. However, if the loan is equal to or over the value of the yacht, you know, because the, the yacht has lost value, uh, that means that the asset is basically gone. So we don't know where that stands. Um, the things just seem to be going from bad to worse in this story. Now, we've had a couple of comments that came up in the previous videos and people were mistaken when I was referring to a princess's trust, thinking I was talking about the prince's trust. Uh, I can understand where the confusion might come in. Now, if, if you're not from the UK, the prince's trust is a registered charity in the UK set up by the then Prince of Wales and now King Charles III. Uh, FYI, this story has no connection with that charity. All right, so we'll move on. And Jeff Bezos flew out to St. Thomas Sunday to join his super yacht, sailing up Karoo. Uh, his private jet made a five and a half hour trip from LA to US Virgin Islands capital, uh, St. Thomas, uh, to join the yacht. And the yacht soon departed and went to a bay uh, still on the island there. Now, have you noticed that the yacht AIS stopped working at this point? This is something that they have, they have done. We're going to give you more information on how this is happening uh, in uh, probably next month in March. And we've got another update on Motor Yacht Nord. It's been spotted in the Seychelles. The video uh, that you're seeing is from Saturday, but the yacht was still there Sunday. The location is just off Mahe. I think that's how you pronounce it. The yacht was in the Maldives a few weeks ago, which we reported on at the time. The yacht is a 142 meter or 466 foot yacht owned by Alexei Mordejov, who is under US, UK and EU sanctions. Uh, he also owns Lady M, which is in Imperia. The yacht has been hiding out since the invasion of Ukraine in 2022, went to Vladivostok and it's been doing this trip, turning off AIS for months at a time and sailing around Maldives and Seychelles and stuff like that. Uh, and the yacht has changed flag states from Cayman Islands to Russia. It has flies a Russian flag now. In, in other instances, there's been no VE day, you know, there's just been like a prolonged situation where you, you're working with people that you don't like. And uh, the only solution is to leave, right? Now, what if your boss is the douchebag and you want to leave, but you've, you, you're in this situation, right? Where you can't get a good reference because your boss is the douchebag. All right, the latest episode of the podcast is on the podcast channel at, Super, at uh, Yacht Report Podcast on YouTube. You can also find it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, as well as Audible. And don't forget to check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash thesisman. You'll find many videos not featured on YouTube, such as our Atlantic Vlog series and the Patreon Chat series, and lots of behind-the-scenes footage from our trips to Super Yacht Marinas all over the world. 
If you've got any information for us about any of the stories here or any other stories, please be sure to get in touch. In the normal fashion, you can get us in the email address and the ticker. You can get us on the about page of the YouTube channel. Get us on Instagram, on Facebook Messenger, on Twitter, and on Threema. Please be sure to like this video. Very important for the algorithm. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell for future notifications. All right, thanks very much for watching, and I'll catch up with you soon. Bye-bye.